Welcome to your Physics 12 screencast on electrostatics. Uh, this session focuses on some of the demonstrations that we've done in class uh, and analyzes them in more detail. In particular, we're going to illustrate a problem solving technique you can use uh, graphically to help figure out what's going on in some of these situations. Uh, so first, some background knowledge we need to bring to the table. Uh, you've seen in earlier sessions that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. Secondly, a charged object will induce um, a charge in a neutral object. Charged objects therefore will attract neutral objects, regardless of what the charge is. Uh, secondly, negative charges, the electrons, which are the particles that are free to move in conductors, will repel each other. So given a chance, they will spread throughout the conductor evenly. And finally, this electrostatic force between charged objects is inversely proportional to the distance between the objects. In other words, if they're farther apart, the force will be weaker. So, let's take a look at one of the more surprising demonstrations that we had in class. So first, the experiment. We have three neutral conductors. Um, I touch each one of them just to ensure that they are not charged. Uh, the ball in the center has been coated with graphite paint, so it is a conductor and the thread is insulated from the ground. The amber rod is repeatedly charged and then rub rubbed across one of the cans. Look closely what happens to the neutral ball. And in order for this interaction to continue, I had to keep touching the can on the left-hand side uh, to keep the ball moving back and forth between the cans. So to try to understand what's going on here, there are a number of techniques we can use with our diagrams. So first, draw the positive charges on each object. Um, remember, for these solid objects as opposed to liquid objects, for solid objects, the positive particles will stay in the same place and their numbers do not change. Uh, for neutral objects, you have to have the same number of positive charges as negative charges. The number of charges you choose in your diagrams is, is arbitrary, really. Um, just make sure the number of negatives and positives are the same in your neutral objects. Next, determine how the negative charges will move based on the situation. Um, if they are conductors, they'll evenly spread out throughout the conductor. Um, if they are um, neutral objects, they may have a bit of an induced charge on them. That's what you'll decide in each situation. Uh, once you've done that, though, identify the direction of the net force on the object and see if you can predict the direction that will move. So let's try to apply this process step by step in breaking down this relatively complicated um, uh, demonstration that we did. See if we can make sense of what's going on. So I'm just going to call them charge diagrams, for lack of a better word. So our starting point is uh, we have our neutral ball, neutral cans. Notice the number of positives and negative charges are the same. As we bring the amber rod uh, up to one of the cans, it will repel the negative charges in the can and some of the negative charges in the neutral ball, but notice the effect is weaker the farther away you are. If physical contact is made between the amber rod and the uh, can, then electrons will transfer onto the can off of the amber rod. When you take the amber rod away, because the neutral can is a conductor, these negative charges will evenly distribute themselves throughout the can. So this can is no longer neutral, it's charged. And now the effect on the neutral ball will be more severe than before as the charge is built up on that can. And on the neutral can on the left, there will be a little bit more of a shift and induction on that uh, can. So now the neutral ball is attracted to the charged can. And we'll move over to the right-hand side. And that's what we saw in the demonstration. As it developed charge, we saw the ball being pulled over to the right-hand side. When it does make contact, the negative charges will transfer onto the ball, making it negatively charged. Not all of them, mind you, but a significant number. And the ball is negatively charged, now will be repelled by the charged can. And the net force will be to the left and the charged ball will begin to rotate away from that negatively charged can towards the neutral can. As it gets closer, that will induce more of a charge in the neutral can. The negative will shift farther away. 
So now as they get closer, the ball will actually be attracted to the induced charge in the left-hand can. And here in the, in the experiment, slowed down a bit, you saw that effect. When it does make contact, the negatives will be repelled off of the ball onto the can, but not all of them. Notice the charged ball is now still negatively charged, but weakly charged. So a bit of repulsion continues to the right-hand side, as we saw in the demonstration. And then that sequence will continue back and forth as charge is transferred from the largely negatively charged can on the right to the weakly negatively charged can on the left. To keep the interaction going, we have to keep removing charges on the left-hand can so that uh, there is um, uh, an opportunity for the charges to leave the pith ball and move on to the can on the left-hand side. So, charge diagrams, a technique you can use to explain any electrostatic phenomenon. Hope that helps.